County 911. Oh my God, uh, we just called the police here. I'm but, Long Acre. Uh, yes, but we need a rescue squad. He's got a bag over his head. Okay. Oh, we're going to see through the window, please. <laughs> We've got them on their way already, okay? okay. I'm sorry. That's all right. Stay on the line. I'm going to transfer oh over to you. Okay? Okay. This is the most important moment of your life. This is the most important day of your life. Little did you know that when you got up this morning. This is the interrogation of Sam Williams. Just to give you some background information before I go back to the interrogation, Sam Williams was convicted of killing Johnny Clark and Lisa Straub back in 2011. Now, it is said the motive behind these murders was Johnny Clark had a safe in his house with around $100,000 worth of money in there. When the police got to the crime scene and they took photos, you can see that the drawers in the kitchens were pulled out, the drawers in the bedrooms and the clothes were on the floor, the mattress was on the floor. Someone came and clearly searched the house as they were looking for something. Now where Sam Williams incriminated himself is this image right here. A single cigarette stub was found on the floor and the DNA was matched to him. Now I'll be giving my analysis of this interrogation footage as we go along. I've actually never seen it before so it will be interesting. If you do end up liking this video, please subscribe. Do you drive to school? Do you? No, I've got my license so I haven't been driving. You don't have your license? What happened? Child poor. Okay, that's actually interesting. Earlier I said one of the motives for the crime was a safe in Johnny's house, which had a lot of money. Sam has just confirmed he doesn't drive because he has to pay child support and he can't afford to drive. You see the link? Who raised you? Your mom and your dad? Were they both together then? Or? My mom. Your mom raised you. Okay. Over on the east side there? Yeah. Like where'd you grow up at? What neighborhood? All over. My mom moved around all over. Some of the Alamanuses were in North Toledo. Did you ever live up in North Toledo? Yeah, my mom was married to Larry. Okay, two further observations. When I try to analyze a suspect, if I can get as much information about their childhood, I do try. In the case of Sam, there was no core family. Single mother. Not that I'm saying that's a bad thing, but I've noticed a correlation in criminals where either the father figure is missing, the mother is missing, or they're both missing. There seems to be a lack of core family in a lot of suspects that I have seen. Number two, his arms are folded. He's anxious. He's nervous. Not necessarily hiding something, but right now he is not at ease. Either that or he's extremely cold. Yes. Okay. Do you want to talk to us? Only thing I want to know is what the, what is it about? All right. And that's it. Other than that, I'm away from my lawyer. I'm not talking at all. I didn't do nothing. I don't know what this is about. Like I said, they would have called me or sent me something in the mail. I could have come down here like Sorry. a civil human being. I didn't have to be humiliated like that. All right, Sam. Hands. Nobody meant to humiliate you. Right. You know how you know how that shit runs. You're in you're in criminal justice. Yes. You know how sometimes things jump off and go down. Okay. Couldn't be helped. That was not an intention to make you look small. So what? My face just came on your guys' desk and said, go get that man, and well, you guys just went came no, and got we'll, we'll get into that, all right? You, you got to be patient with us, too, all right? Who is your attorney? A few of them. Okay, who, who, would, who would you use if you needed it? It, it just depends. It really does. There is something remarkably satisfying about the police officer's voice. The one at the bottom who you can just see his head. He's speaking with a level of conviction. He's speaking to Sam like a man. Sam himself, two lawyers or three lawyers he said, maybe one for child support, maybe one for any other criminal activity. But for him to have lawyers in the plural just goes to show his experience with law enforcement. Hence why he's asked for one or he's asked to speak to one straight away. Who who's you used in the past? Then? Jane Roman. Okay. Tom Stebbins. Stebbins. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? No. Okay. Do you have much time to hang with people? What do you mean? You got a lot of friends. I know a lot of people. Okay. And do you hang with them? Do things with them? 
for the most part. Okay. Detective's going to run a few names by you, okay? Let us know if you know these people or not, okay? You know a guy named uh, Johnny Clark? You don't know John Clark? No. You know a young lady named Lisa Straub? No. Don't know Johnny no. Clark. You don't know Lisa Straub? Straub? Did you get over in South Toledo very much? No. No. I used to live in South Toledo. Where probably was I just, me and my mom just bought that house, and that was two months ago on Prouty Street. Okay. How long did you stay over there? Me and my mom was there no more than three or four months. Tops. My you know, mom uh, was living with this woman, and I moved in with them because I didn't have no place to go. My mom took me in. That's where I was living at. You know a young lady named Lindsay Straub? I don't know any of them Straubs. Okay. You ever get out in Springfield Township? You ever get that far south? Holland, Ohio. I stay on the east side. Okay. He's going to show you a picture of a house. See if this house looks familiar to your guy. Okay, in a very passive way, it seems like the officers have slowly broken a little walls. Sam just a moment ago wanted lawyer, 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 right? Now when they ask him, do you know Johnny? He said no. Do you know Lindsay? He said no. By answering the question in any way, you are incriminating yourself. The police officers already know he's lying, given the information they have. They're looking for him to validate this. The way the officer gets up and goes, hey, he's going to show you this house. He says it in a confident manner. You have to get that. Oh. Who's your mom married to? Which one is she, she was married. He, he died, though. Yeah, right. One um, of those boys died. I knew there their parents. A, there was a couple of them that died, but um, Larry. Larry I knew died. Larry. Larry died. Sure. He raised me with my mom most of my life since I was five. Larry was in and out of his scrapes, but for the most part, Larry was all right. He didn't have his problems being an alcoholic. But Larry was that. always very respectful with me. Okay, so maybe I was wrong about his father. I guess his father did raise him. Um, but the point of this stage of the video is that the officer now is breaking down even more walls, trying to relate to him, trying to be personable by saying, hey, I knew your father. The question there, though, is why does the police officer know his father? Was his father in engaging in criminal activities too? Was his father someone that was known to the police? Either way, the officer right now is using this for his advantage and against Sam. Sam's biggest problem at this stage was when they asked him, had you seen Johnny Clark? He carried on talking and kept going on about living here and living there. He spoke far more than what he needed to and that gave the officers their in. Appreciate it there. That's as good as we got. Yeah, that's good. That house looked familiar to you at all? No. Have you ever been to that house? It's in Springfield Township. No. Okay. You sure? Um, positive. All right. All right. 100% positive. All right. Some more names? Yeah. You know what? Uh, I'm going to throw some names at you. You know, you tell me, you know, you know, uh, Tom Watson? You know Tom? Anthony, Tone, always hangs out with a... Couple, a I know a couple of Tonys, but not, you don't go by Tone. Well, yeah. Anthony, Tony, um, hangs with a dude, mixed dude, Zach, Fat Zach. You know, Fat Who's Zach. the Tonys you know? Yeah. I know one from the east side, um, Starlet, my baby mom's other baby dad, Anthony Wolf. Wolf, W-O-L-F-E, or... They spell their name different. W O. Oh, wait, wait, wait. He said baby mom's other dad. Who's that? Is that does that mean his baby mama has a kid with someone else? That's fine. I'm just. Can can someone decipher that for me? Please comment. What did he mean by that? This would be Zach. You know that dude? Mm -hmm. No. No. This is a dude named Chris. No. Never seen him. This is Anthony or Tom. Never come across so, these three? Neither one of them. Neither of these guys? Okay. Never. Is there any reason any of these guys would say they know you? No. Okay. I have no reason to know them at okay. all. Good. I don't do Good. nothing. Like I said, I've been going to school. I mean, you can, my mom can vouch for me on that one. Huh? I've been sitting in the house. 
I ain't been doing nothing. And Starla stays with you over there, and right? For right now, but she just got her place and her games. We're going through some stuff right now. Me and her is not going to be together because she got caught up in some bullshit last year. I was driving her. The police did not even ask about his personal situation in this detail, right? This conversation started, this part of the conversation started where they asked, do you know X individual? And would these X individuals know you? Look at his face there. That is the face of a beaten man. Not beaten as in he knows they think he's guilty. Just someone in life who is just distraught. How do you think he feels? The person he's with has a kid with someone else. His father is no longer with him. It seems he's been around drugs his whole life. Maybe not a user of drugs, but drugs have been around him his whole life. He has seen crime and been around crime his whole life. This is all he knows. And the worrying thing for him is that the police officers now, probably during this phase of the interrogation, know this is our guy. DNA or not, this is our guy. Sam continuously talking, elaborating on his own situation is just incriminating him even further. Not necessarily with what he said. Sometimes in life, the manner in which you say something is far worse than what you actually say. Here, drop her off somewhere, I dropped her off, and the same people that pulled up on me today, pulled over, pulled me over, took me to jail for promoting prostitution, and I got out the next day, and I left, I asked her about it, she said just leave it alone. Me and her really haven't been, haven't had the love for her, I should say. Why Ever do you since think, then. Do you think she was doing she, something like that? She lied to me. I, if she got caught in an operation, Obviously, she, something was going on that I didn't know. So you're, you're, she asked you for a ride, you dropped her off, and yeah, she was actually in, yeah. into the prostitution thing. She, she got, oh, you got prostitute. nailed. Yeah, and that like it just made my love for her not. Did she get arrested? Did she get arrested? Yeah, I she got did. arrested and she got arrested, and it's like, I don't know, it's not been the same. I haven't been able to see my six month old. That's why I've been going to school. Like, I don't want to live like that. Just as I thought. Turns out his missus, his girlfriend, whatever you want to call her, is a prostitute. He's claiming he didn't know. He hasn't seen his child in a long time. I'm a father myself. But that is tough. I got two little boys to take care of. I don't want them growing up being hoodlums. How do you do the child support? I haven't been paying child support. I paid, what was it, 200 and some dollars on my child support. I took that out of my grant money and paid for it. The grant money for school? Yeah. You're supposed to be using for school. Yeah. Well, I paid for all my books. I got everything taken care of that I needed to get taken care of, but I took out loans, too. Oh, I, okay. I accepted my loans, too, so I got to keep my loans. They gave me back, like, 4300 or something. So that's what I've so been you, living off of. So now the grants, you don't have to pay that back. No, the grants. But the loans, loans, you're yeah. gonna have to pay that back. When I when I graduate. When yeah. you graduate, how far along are you in school? I just started this semester. Oh, you did just yeah. start. Just Can I ask started. you how much it does it cost to go to Owens as a full time student? Twenty with my books and stuff. I want to say it was like twenty seven hundred, and like pretty much my Pell Grant took care of all of that. Okay. Human beings all experience grief and when we go through grief, we enter five stages. Now Sam obviously is not grieving right now, but he is demonstrating one of those five stages and that is bargaining. Let's have a look at what he's doing right now. He's mentioned that his girlfriend is a prostitute, the mother of his children, right? He, he's finding it hard to support his kids. He has to take money from his school loans or grants and pay for his kids. He's defaulted on his child support. He doesn't even drive because of that. I'm just a good boy. I want to go to school is his narrative. He is seeking sympathy or recognition for the tough situation he is in. Without saying it in these words, he's essentially stating to the officers, please don't put me away. My life is so bad. Young adult. And, uh, they were probably the victim of a burglary. They got bum rushed in the place. You know what we're talking about, bum rushed. Somebody just crashes in on you, maybe robs you, or burglarizes your house. I mean, you know what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Okay. So that's what happened to these 
young people. So how did my name get brought up in this? Science. I don't understand how. Well, remember when these guys respond to a scene and they go in there. You're a criminal justice major, right? You're cordoned off the area. Everybody that is involved in that scene goes in, they start collecting evidence. Okay? These guys collected a lot of evidence. And they had a lot of evidence tested for DNA. Do you know what DNA is? Okay, explain to us what you think DNA is. You, you, saliva, whatever. Saliva, poop, piss, skin cells, hair, follicles, all that stuff gives up an individual's individual characteristics. You buy that based on what you've been taught in school? I haven't. I'm only doing my, like, basic okay. courses. Right. Now. I'm not doing They that. will tell you soon enough that DNA is like fingerprints. You know, there's no two fingerprints that are alike. There's no two DNAs that are alike. Each of us have a separate one. If they tested Jeff here, his had come up with a certain row of numbers that mean something to the scientists. They tested you. Okay, quickly, I'm sorry. I know this interrogation is getting better and better. Um, as I'm watching the officer speak, I can just feel the adrenaline. I can see the adrenaline rushing through Sam's body. You'd come up with a different bunch of numbers in a row that mean something to the scientists. But yours would be like Jeff's. If I spit on a cotton swab and they did my DNA, numbers would come up. Mine would not be like yours. Mine would not be like his. We're all separate. Just like if they took our fingerprints tonight, your fingerprint would be different from Jeff's, be different from mine. Mine would be different from him and from you. You understand where we're going? It's unique to the individual. There's no two DNAs that are alike. Totally understand it. Okay. Okay. Now, when these guys collected a lot of pieces of evidence in there that were involved in this crime, they sent it down to Bowling Green for testing. Now, I won't lie. These are two of the best police officers I've seen in interrogations. You see how they've been cool, calm, relaxed the whole time. They know exactly what they're doing. They are taking so long to explain DNA in such a mild, almost educational manner. They know he knows what DNA is. He may not know what the science behind it is, but he knows or he has a basic understanding of how DNA works. How everyone has a, gen uh, a specific, a unique uh, genetic code, whatever you want to call it, right? But in his mind, subconsciously, he is in a state of discontent. He's in limbo. Are they going to put me away? Do they have evidence? Do they know it's me? Am I doing a good enough job? Are they going to let me go? This is rattling through his body. And they know that. But they just want to play to it a little bit. Play to those strings a little bit. Because they know the longer he's thinking this, the longer he's feeling this, the more and more nervous he gets. At some point, he's going to crack. Okay. And items in that scene came back with your DNA on it. Okay. Well, how do you explain that? How can we explain that? I have no idea. You've never been to that house. Never been you to that house. You don't know those kids. I don't know them people. And your DNA's in that house. I don't know. You have no idea? No. Nope. Do you understand where that puts you? Do you understand where this is going? You know, Knowing your father, I don't think it's you. I don't think you have that stuff in you. But here you are, you're going to school, you're trying to take care of your two boys, you're living with your mom. Things get out of hand expense wise. For Christ's sakes, he and I pay on a mortgage. I had $500 worth of brakes go out last month and then I had to put four new tires on my car this month. It really set me behind and I work. 
okay? Now, when you've got those kind of heavy problems, you discuss them with people. I don't give a shit. I do. Hell, I discuss them with my wife. I discuss them with my friends. Okay, can you figure out where this is going now? The officer is citing financial hardship as a reason for this crime, and he's now trying to place Sam at the crime being a lack of money or chasing money or stealing money as his motive, given his current situation. Where's the best place I can go for tires? Where's the best place I can go for brakes? This is the kind of shit that builds up in our lives. And for me to say it didn't stress me, or for him to say that a mortgage doesn't stress him, and that sometimes we get in where we feel like we can't breathe, it's bullshit, because it happens to all of us. You got problems with the boys going to school, not being able to support them. Your girlfriend, mother of one of your children, hides a bunch of shit on you. You don't even know what she's about till she tells you. You discuss this stuff with people. I don't give a shit. You do. You're a human being. You say, I got problems. This is what my problems are. Okay? Follow me? Somebody says, hey, I think I can open a door for you. I think we can get you out of some of these problems. We can get you some money. Okay? And people discuss this with you and say, all we want you to do is maybe watch the door or watch them. Make sure it doesn't get out of hand because we're going to rip them off. We're going to get some money and you're going to get part of that money. All right. Now the ball's in your court. This is serious shit. This is very serious shit. What do you want to do with it? What do you want to do with your life? Where do you want to go from here? Can you tell us where you want to go from here? Do you want to cooperate in this investigation? Because you're in. You're into your chin. Okay? We want your help. We want to be able to say, this guy right here, father of two children who had a lot of problems realized the hole that he had dug for himself and he wanted out of that hole and he reached out his hand to us and we took him by the hand we helped him out of that hole all right you follow me mm -hmm. okay how do you want to work with this this, this is why i said these are two of the best policemen i've come across no fuss no elaborate plan no lies the sh pure experience that's it they knew he was it from the beginning they were just trying to figure out how can we break it down and this officer ripped his life apart sam's life that is in a matter of two minutes essentially saying you're broke you decided to steal you ended up killing someone but guess what you should have grown up dealt with the situation and fixed it properly so now do you want to help me and get this done I love these two officers. This is the most what you're saying. This is the most important moment of your life. This is the most important day of your life. Little did you know that when you got up this morning. Little did you know when you got up this morning, when you went out the house, when you said goodbye to your mom or whatever happened, or the last time you saw your kids. Little did you know that today, the 22nd of September, 2011, would be the most important day of your life when it all comes crashing down around you. All right. Now, you say those officers out there humiliated you out there. All right. How's it going to look to the people out there when they find out you're in here and you're not helping yourself? You're humiliating yourself even more. What are these people going to think of you? What are your sons going to think of you? What is your mother going to think of you? These are the things you have to consider. You have to keep turning this shit around in your mind and say, wait a minute, this isn't me. This is something I got caught up in, but I'm going to tell you guys the truth. I'm going to lay it out there like a man. Okay, that's the end of the interrogation. Sam was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. But to me, in this entire video, the story are the officers. Nicely done.